All right. Well, David Kenyon is here to chat with us about one of the most historic franchises in the NFL, the Cleveland Browns. David, sir, I feel like we could spend hours just talking about what such a great franchise the Cleveland Browns are. And it all starts with the draft. Yes, it does. Great segue, David. Wow, nicely done. I try. So the the draft, David, now that you mentioned it, wow, thank you. Thank you for mentioning the draft. Uh, what the heck are the Browns going to do, or what, what – what, what should they do, and what more than likely will they end up doing? Well, what they should do is, quite simply, take the best player on their board, whether that's a quarterback or not. And we got a little insight into what the Browns are thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hugh Jackson made the smart call to not say that they were focused on a quarterback with their first or second pick in the draft. Mm. But we know that they're going to draft a quarterback, he said as much, so it leads us to believe, and the Cleveland Plain Dealer reported as well, they're probably going to take it with the number two overall pick. So you're looking at a new quarterback in Cleveland, not necessarily to start right away, but one who will get drafted number two this year. You was going to say, you'd have to have the thought, though, in the back of your mind that If they draft a quarterback that high, at least you'd have to think in some people's minds that they would look for him to start, though. Sure, and and that's been the expectation that uh, we've, I guess, created in the NFL today. Um, Many people don't remember that a lot of quarterbacks who are successful at this point, Mm -hmm. they weren't starting right away. True. They waited a year or two before they took over. And so you have a guy... Uh, in McCown, who's there, and he wasn't awful, <laughs> and the Browns aren't going to win a Super Bowl, whether it's a rookie or not. True. There's just so, a, there's a lot of things they're still missing. Exactly. So you don't have to have your rookie come in right away. You can develop, develop him for a year mm-hmm. and go from there. And Hugh Jackson, uh, a lot of people may not know or not remember, he was the quarterback's coach for the Baltimore Ravens when they drafted this kid named Joe Flacco. Oh, okay. And Flacco's kind of turned out to be a Super Bowl champion. He has. So he has. Jackson knows what he's doing. Do we have an, a, an inkling of who might start in Cleveland then next year if, if it's not their uh, their new rookie? It it just have to be McCown. Hmm. There's, there's no veteran on the market that they would... Uh, go after to replace him, I can't imagine. And there's no sense in bringing a young guy because then you're just asking for a, a ridiculous controversy next year. Not True. that there necessarily would be one, but it's McCown or a rookie, and most likely McCown. And McCown's not the worst option, as we. I mean, obviously he didn't have a stellar season last year, and I know he was back and forth with injuries as well too. But you know, he's not not the worst option if you had to pick somebody. Yeah, but you're obviously looking for an upgrade over him, and that's what yes. they'll be doing. Uh, they're the main guys on the board in play for that number two spot because unless the Titans trade out of number one, they're obviously not going to take a quarterback with Marcus Mariota mm-hmm. entrenched there. So you're looking at Carson Wentz from North Dakota State, Jared Goff from California, and Paxton Lynch from Memphis. Who has the best opportunity, do you think, to excel in what the Browns are trying to do offensively? And it's tough because everything with them is a projection. You're not looking at a a clear-cut number one guy. You're not looking at a a safe pick necessarily. Uh, Jackson had said what he's looking for is a quarterback with big hands, and that sounds silly, and it can be a very silly thing if it's not taken in the proper context because there is a threshold it's considered nine inches if you don't have anything more than nine inch hands you typically do not succeed in the nfl Hmm, interesting that is not a perfect indicator of success nothing ever is no but But it certainly helps though correct because you're talking about gripping in poor weather uh wind tighter spiral Everything like that. Any bit of control a quarterback can have, that's great. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not a perfect indicator because you look at Jared Goff, who measured in today with nine-inch hands, and Paxton Lynch, who had ten and a quarter. Hmm. Lynch had seven fumbles. Goff had four. Interesting. Goff had trouble throwing in the wind. Lynch had less. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, I oh mean, gosh, you, okay. You you just have to weigh everything carefully. You have to take this hands into account. Yes. But you don't put your entire stock into it. Exactly, and that's the hard. I mean, uh, for local listeners here around the Milwaukee area, they remember that Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers both have fairly good sized hands, and I think that's one thing. At least Brett Favre that I remember as a kid growing up going to the Packers Hall of Fame, you'd, there was the hand mold on the wall, and you could you know compare your hand to Brett Favre. And I remember Favre having obviously a huge hand. Obviously, I was a kid at the time, but it was bigger than even my dad's hand at the time. So I was like, wow, okay. I'm like Brett Favre's not messing around. He can definitely grip the ball incredibly tight. Yeah, I mean, I just looked it up because I was curious. Favre measured in at 10 and 3 eighths. I mean, okay. that is a massive hand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's probably why he could throw it. I mean, obviously, he just had very good shoulder strength, but he could grip that ball and whip it around like nobody's business because of that as well. Exactly. Do we know, I mean, since you're in front of your, your Googling-ness, do we know who's got the biggest hand in the league right now or bigger hands oh. in the league? In the league, I mean, I could get back to you on that. <laughs> That's your homework for next show. Uh, I know kidding. Kawhi Leonard has 11, uh, near 11 inch hands for uh, the San Antonio Holy Spurs cow. in the NBA. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's a. Uh, whoo! Holy cow. His nickname is The Claw, so. Uh, that, okay, then. I, I understand where that comes from, then. Goodness. Uh, talking with David Kenyon here at Bleacher Report on the VG Sports Show. Well, David, before we let you go, uh, aside from a quarterback, I mean, is there anything else? That, I mean, we all know that Cleveland needs the help, but is there any specific position or any other players that if they didn't go for a quarterback right away, that maybe might help fill some gaps? Well, you're, you're looking at uh, offensive linemen. Uh, the Titans have uh, a very good option at Laramie Tunsil. Uh, from Ole Miss, he's a left tackle. He can go plug and play there. Sure. If if the Titans trade out of that spot or pick someone else, I would strongly consider picking uh, Tunsil if I'm Cleveland, hmm. unless they are convinced that one of the quarterbacks is their man. Because Joe Thomas, uh, he's slowly working his way out of Cleveland long yeah, time that's, that's left noticeable. tackle and then center Alex Mack may opt out of his contract so mm-hmm. Cleveland's and I think Mitchell Schwartz is a free agent too so oh, geez. Cleveland's strength is becoming a weakness very quickly potentially mm-hmm. and then their defense is, you know it just needs help everywhere exactly so, yeah I mean and their just, kick yeah huh. I mean they just need a lot of help they do, and I think that's been a Cleveland's problem for a long time, too. So, All right, well, David, thank you so much for taking the time today on the program. Uh, where can people check out your writing and find you on social media? You can find me on Bleacher Report and catch me on Twitter at Kenyon19 underscore BR. Fantastic. David, Kenyon of Bleacher Report, always a pleasure, sir.